Hello YouTube, how is everyone doing today? It's Professional here. So I wanted to talk about an article that I read a few days ago that interested me a great deal. And this is relating to Article 13. And Article 13 is extremely important to YouTube. Um, if you're not familiar with the law, this law was actually passed in the European Union a few months ago. And what Article 13 basically says very quickly is it's a law that makes copyright rules a lot more strict. And in the past, it was where YouTube Places like YouTube, Facebook, other social media sites, etc., they would not be held liable for their for their users posting copyrighted material. They would be required to take that stuff down, but they would not be personally responsible for it. Now the problem is, is that what this law basically does is it makes YouTube and Facebook and all those other platforms responsible for it. So when somebody posts a copyrighted movie, copyright music, copyright whatever on YouTube, YouTube is now going to be held to a greater um, standard. So YouTube does not want this, Facebook does not want this, most websites do not want this. They think it's going to be a disaster. And I know it's going to be a disaster in my personal experience as a YouTuber because the copyright system as we have right now is already broken. And if they make this even more strict, it's going to be even more broken. And the copyright system, it's so broken, not just my channel, but there's so many YouTube channels out there where people are getting their videos flagged falsely, false copyright accusations against those videos and those channels. This happens all the time with these music companies. The music companies are the worst offenders of this. Constantly abusing copyright. I'll give you guys a perfect example. I said this example before, but you know, a few years ago I was doing a Payday 2 live stream. It was a long live stream, like five, six hours. What happened was when I uploaded that to YouTube, the video got a copyright claim on it. There was already a copyright claim on it. And I was thinking to myself, how could there possibly be a copyright claim on this on this video? Payday 2 has no music. It only has the in-game soundtrack. So what are they accusing me of here? So what I did was I watched the video and I clicked on the second that they claimed copyright. It was basically like five seconds. What happened was one of my friends joined the party, played a song from his phone. It went from his phone into his mic and it went into my mic on the stream, broadcasted itself for like five seconds. The quality was so bad. I told my friend, turn it off, he turned it off. I had my whole five, six hour stream. They made a claim against me on a five, six hour stream over five seconds of a song that he played from his phone and it went to my um, headset and it was it was automatically detected because there's two types of detection. There's automatic detections where these companies, they have these, um, they have these server systems, I don't know what you want to call it, where they detect, they automatically detect. They scan all the videos on YouTube and they detect if this copyright stuff pops up in somebody's video, they automatically get a claim. There's also manual claims where an individual person from that company watches the video and then makes a claim against it. And these music companies are just abusing it so bad. But how does it relate to this video? It relates to this video because what happens is Poland is the first country in the European Union to actually come out against this. It's a government. A lot of people are very unhappy with this, especially people in Europe, because this is a European Union law. But even though it's a European Union law, it's probably gonna have a global effect because if it if it goes into full effect, YouTube is probably gonna have to put in some kind of new filter and that's probably gonna affect international everybody internationally. But Poland is the first government to come out against Article 13 and they've actually submitted it to the European court. So um, let me read the article for you guys. And also, there's a lot of people in Europe that are very upset with this law. This law is not popular at all. I was just reading so many comments. I very rarely see anybody supporting this law. Most people are against this law. And yet, no European governments have actually come out against this law. They voted for it. It passed. No European government has really come out against this law until now. Poland is the first country. And we're also going to talk about what's going to happen now that Poland has actually come out against it, even though Poland's a member of the EU. So let's read the article here. Poland has filed a complaint against the European Union's copyright directive. The directive was approved in April and goes into force in June. Poland has officially challenged the European Union's recently approved controversial copyright directive, according to Reuters, saying that the legislation would bring unwanted censorship. The country filed this complaint yesterday with the Court of Justice of the European Union. 100% right. This would encourage censorship because these companies are going to be abusing it even more. And guess who is the biggest supporter of this copyright law? Yep. It's those same companies that are constantly making these false copyright claims. So let's keep reading here. 
Poland's Deputy Foreign Minister Konrad Szymanski said that the system may result in adopting regulations that are analogous to preventive censorship, which is forbidden not only in the Polish constitution, but also in the EU treaties. Polish MPs predominantly rejected the measure. Two abstentions, eight for, 33 against, six no votes, and two missing when it was voted on. So the government of Poland, largely against this. A lot of people voted against it, 33 against. Um, let's read right here. There's a tweet from the Chancellery of the Prime Minister of Poland. And the tweet says, Tomorrow morning, Poland will bring a case before the European Court of Justice against the Copyright Directive, a, dis a disproportionate measure that fuels censorship and threatens freedom of expression. 100% right on that. You know, these companies are just going to keep abusing these claims. I've been a victim of false copyright claims, not just the Payday 2 stream. So many times it's happened to me. So the Council of the European Union officially approved the directive in April, and it goes into force on June 7, 2019. Wonderful. That's on my birthday. So Article 13 is going into effect on my birthday. That's wonderful. Following that action, EU member states will have until June 7, 2021 to produce their own laws to implement it. Okay, because for people that don't understand, this law is a directive. A directive and what a directive in the European Union basically is is it means that every single country in the European Union has to adopt some kind of measure of the law the law is passed they have no choice but to adopt some kind of measure on it so every single country has to make their own version of the law and they basically have two years to make that version but Poland is basically coming out and saying nope we're not going to enforce this, this is stupid so let's keep reading the legislation is, is designed to update copyright law and contains a number of controversial clauses such as Article 11, the so-called link tax, which will allow publishers to charge platforms such as Google to display news stories. Yeah, and Article 13, which says that platforms will be liable for content that infringes on someone's copyright. Exactly what I was saying um, earlier. You know, it's kind of stupid. You know, these websites, YouTube and Facebook, these websites have millions and millions and millions of users. How are you going to hold YouTube responsible for what somebody might upload? You know, you can't hold you can't hold the enti entire YouTube responsible for what somebody uploads. I understand if somebody uploads copyright stuff, I understand. You got to take it down. You know, that's not fair to the creator. But at the same time is millions and millions and millions of users on these sites how are you going to hold the website responsible? It's going to be impossible to enforce something like that. Like I said so many times, this law is unenforceable. It's unrealistic. And these politicians that are pushing this law have no idea what they're talking about. So let's keep reading. Users for platforms such as Facebook, Google, YouTube, Wikipedia, and others fear the directive could be detrimental to how they use the site. Content platforms aren't liable for what they're hosting, provided they make the effort to remove anything that is infringing on one's copyright, like music or pirated movies. Sites would now have to proactively ensure that copyrighted content isn't making it onto the site. As my colleague James Vincent and Russell Brandom noted last year, sites might have to resort to implementing a filter which would be ripe for abuse by copyright trolls and would make millions of mistakes. The technology simply doesn't exist to scan the inter internet's content in this way. Okay. So look, there is no way to enforce this kind of law. You can't enforce something like this, you know. Uh, how are you going to have a system like this? You can't have, you, YouTube does not, even though YouTube is so large, YouTube does not even have the manpower to have all these people sitting and just checking videos and watching videos all day. You know, they have those automatic um, detections for those copyright um, holders, but even then, that is broken. These copyright holders these music companies oftentimes they constantly abuse it you know there's been some companies that you know they've been good they don't do that nonsense you know people play their games you know people uh people do a reaction to a trailer and that doesn't happen you know there's something called fair use and you know fair use is youtube says that it supports fair use but the way that these copyright holders abuse it, it they don't really see it that way they don't see they don't see fair use and you know what is fair use Fair use is basically reacting to something, criticizing something, adding some of your own content to something. It's not stealing somebody's content, but it's adding part of your content to it, like a criticism, you know, a reaction. That's how people, you know, upload those reactions. You know, they upload the reactions to trailers, upload reactions to specific videos, and the reason they don't they don't have copyright claims against them is because they're adding part of their own thing to the video. They're reacting to it. They're giving criticism on it. That's how people do reactions. And I've done several reactions. And even when people do reactions, they still get copyright claims against them. It happens a lot. I, I've done reactions to trailers where I get a copyright claim against me literally a few minutes after I upload that video. And uh, a few videos I've done, 
I was actually surprised that I didn't get a copyright claim. Like I did the Rambo reaction, didn't get a copyright claim for that. And I did, um, I did a reaction to the Chernobyl trailer, did not get a copyright claim for that. But other things, there's been specific game games that I've reacted to. When, whenever I reacted to a Rockstar Games trailer, I always got a copyright claim. Every time I reacted to a Rockstar's game trailer, if it was for a Red Dead trailer or it was some kind of GTA Online update, I always got a copyright claim. There was I don't think there was a single time where I did not get a copyright claim. And you know, to be fair to Rockstar, I don't think this is entirely their fault because it's their automatic system. But I know what some people are going to ask me. If these if these companies and all these groups are constantly abusing copyright, why don't why don't people fight back against this? Why don't they fight back against these decisions? And the reason people don't fight back against these decisions is because what happens is when you can make an appeal, so basically you can make an appeal and say this claim is not legitimate. This is nonsense. This is not a real claim. Um, this is not copyrighted material. You can make that claim, but guess who reviews it? the same people who made the claim against you. So if some random music company, you know, comes on one of my videos and says, no, 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 this is copyright, this is ours now, and I make a copyright claim against it, they are the ones to review it. That's what happened with my Arena Wars video. I made a video, you know, like half a year ago, and it was when Arena Wars first came out, and I made a video where I purchased the, um, I purchased the most expensive workshop in the Arena Wars DLC on GT Online, and I customized it, and then what I did was I played one match in the arena, and what happened was I got a copyright claim against me m months later, like months later, I don't know where it came out of, and I looked at the video and I was like, what are they possibly giving me a copyright claim for? They were claiming copyright on the arena theme song, you know, that theme song, not, not an actual music track, but the theme song, that like song that plays in the arena whenever you go into it, they were claiming copyright for that. It was absolutely ridiculous, it was nonsense, and the reason people don't don't uh, appeal it, these same people are going to be reviewing it. And they oftentimes say no. 95% of the time, these people say no. And most YouTubers, they don't feel like fighting it further. Because if they fight it further, and they make a second appeal, I don't know at that point who reviews it, but if YouTube does not agree with you on the second appeal, that channel can get in trouble. That channel can get a copyright strike. They can get into serious trouble for that if YouTube does not agree with them on the second appeal. That's why most YouTubers don't uh, fight back against it. And because of that, these music companies and all these other people, these filmmakers that are going to be abusing copyright, they're basically extorting these channels. They're basically stealing their content because when they make a copyright claim against these channels, they're taking revenue from these videos. So, you know, there could be something where somebody makes a really good video, gets millions of views, they put a lot of hard work into it, and there's some a few seconds of a song or something like that or them reacting to something. And what happens is some music company will just come in there, they'll slam the table and be like, nope, this is ours now, and then they're going to take all the revenue from it and they're going to take that creator's hard work. It's, it, it's basically extortion. It's out of control. And it's this bad now. This is how it is now. Now with Article 13. With Article 13, this is going to be even worse. So, you know, with Poland, you know, going against this law, what is going to happen now? I don't know. I think we'll probably get a few, uh, some news in a few days because in a few days, that's when it's going to start being enforced. Countries are going to start looking into how they're going to implement this law. But I think the European Union, they might come out with some measures against Poland. They might they might say to Poland straight up like you can't uh, you can't do this you know if you don't enforce this law we're gonna take away something from you we're going to put some kind of sanction on you something like that um, they're basically going to threaten some kind of legal action against Poland that's that's probably going to happen European Union has done that before to other countries not a specific criticism of the European Union if you're supported or against it but that's happened with the European Union where cer certain countries don't agree with them not necessarily in Article 13 but on other laws. And they just literally come out against them. They threaten them. They pursue some type of legal action. It's happened before. So that's probably going to happen. But this is definitely a step in the right direction. Because as it relates to Poland, Poland is now the first country, really, the first government to come out against this. And now that one country has come out against this, maybe another country isn't going to be so scared of coming out against this. Because despite how unpopular this law is, these governments are not making any kind of criticism against it. Their people are very unhappy with this law. Article 13 is universally hated across Europe and it's even hated other parts of the world because people don't want to have to deal with some kind of filter coming in from Europe because of a European law. So what is going to happen now? Are these, are these governments in other countries, are they going to step up and do something? Are they also going to say no? 
or are they just going to listen to what the European Union has to say? But, you know, I hope best for Poland. My parents are from Poland, so I hope the best for Poland, that they're definitely taking a step in the right direction. And Poland, the Polish government literally right now is on the side of freedom and free expression because Article 13 is what it is. It's basically a law that gives giant corporations power power to extort the small creator that's pretty much what article 13 is so i hope that you guys have enjoyed this video if you didn't know a lot about article 13 i hope i um educated you this is my third video talking about this because this is just such a such an important um such an important law and has the potential to really break the internet so thank you guys for watching if you guys enjoyed the video drop a like if you're new to my channel join my con subscribe if you have any questions down below about this law um let me know i'll try to answer as many people as i can so thank you guys for watching i'll see you guys on the next one take care everyone